Shalom, shalom. Welcome back to Mysteries of the Messiah, Season 1, The Birth of a Jewish King. This is a, a special episode. I don't know about you, but I love the holiday season. There is something so special about Christmas time, but here's a crazy thought. Jesus never celebrated Christmas. <laughs> But he did celebrate Hanukkah, the festival of lights. Can you say Hanukkah? You got to get the ha in there, Hanukkah. And it's so amazing because the Jewish holidays are God's appointed times. And every major event in the life of Yeshua and the life of Jesus happened on a Jewish holiday. So if you want to fully understand the Gospels and the life of the Messiah, you have to understand the biblical holidays because so much of the story revolves around them. So if you want to see the scriptures in HD, have that road to Emmaus experience, understanding the holidays is such a significant and important part of being able to do it. And we read how Yeshua, Jesus, went up to celebrate Hanukkah in Jerusalem. John chapter 10, verse 22 this is what it says. Now, it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Yeshua Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then some of the leaders surrounded him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? Tell us plainly, are you the Mashiach? Are you the Messiah? And Yeshua answered them, I tell you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name, they bear witness to me. So I want to explore in this episode the mystery and the meaning of Hanukkah so that we can understand what's going on in John chapter 10 a little bit more clearly and how it ties into the scriptures. So the story of Hanukkah was so compelling that Mel Gibson actually wanted to make a story about Hanukkah. Well, I'm going to share the story with you about Hanukkah. Maybe some of you are not familiar with it, but I am going to begin with a little bit of a Hanukkah rap, and it goes like this. A long time ago in a distant land, there lived a very, very evil man. His name was Antiochus Epiphanes, and he wanted all Israel to bow their knees, so we came up with a wicked plan to wipe Torah out from the promised land. He went into the temple, the house of God, and erected an idol in the courtyard. Oh, Hanukkah, oh, Hanukkah, come light the menorah. Let's have a party. You will all dance the horror. Gather around the table. We'll give you a treat. Dreidels to play with and latkes to eat. Hey, <laughs> just a little bit of fun. We got to have fun here on the Mysteries of the Messiah podcast, you know, my dream is to be the rapping rabbi, but that's just a dream, but we can have fun anyway. So here's the real story of Hanukkah. During the intertestamental period, that's the time between the close of the Old Testament and the New Testament, in 168 BC, there was a Greco-Syrian Greco ruler by the name of Antiochus, and he went up into the temple in Jerusalem. He seized the temple. He went into the Holy of Holies, he erected an idol to Zeus, and he sacrificed a pig on the altar, the most unkosher animal, a pig, a idol in the house of God, breaking the commandments that you're not to make an image of God. You can imagine what a desecration this was of the Holy of Holies. And if that wasn't bad enough, he ordered his soldiers in 167, to go from town to town, he not only uh, outlaws the study and the keeping of many of the precepts of the Torah, the five books of Moses, but he actually goes to these different towns and he commands the elders and the leaders of the town to offer a sacrifice to Zeus, to a foreign god, to bow down and then eat pig, to eat swine's flesh. And many people cowered in fear. Many people compromised and gave in. But they came to one town, the town of Modi'in in Israel, and there was a godly high priest by the name of Madis, uh, name of Madis Yahu, Mattathias, and he refused to bow down in that righteous indignation. He rose up and he slew the wicked emissary 
of Antiochus, and he said, whoever is for God, whoever is for Torah, whoever is for his word, follow me to the hills. And people came to him, and this ragtag group of freedom fighters eventually beat the greatest power of their day. God delivered the many into the hands of the few. It was a huge miracle. They went up to Jerusalem. They recaptured the house of God. It was in total disarray. They wanted to worship there once again, so they rebuilt the altar. They went into the holy place, and they saw that the menorah, the seven-branch candelabra, wasn't lit, which was always meant to remain lit. It was symbolic of God's presence, the light of God's presence among the people, the eternal light. They only had enough kosher oil to last one day, but they had the faith to light anyway, They lit the menorah, and a great miracle happened. The one cruise of oil, enough for one day, burned for seven more for a total of eight days. So Hanukkah celebrates the miracle of fighting and lighting, and that's what I have here. This is known as a Hanukkah. The Hanukkah is the nine-branched candelabra. Eight In the traditional menorah, there's seven branches for the seven days of creation. But this is a nine-branch candelabra, eight for each of the nights of the miracle of Hanukkah that the light was lit. And then the ninth, which is raised above the other, is the servant candle. And you use that to light the other lights. That's the only thing you can use it for because this reminds us of the light of the miracle of Hanukkah and the light of God's presence among his people. And that's why Hanukkah is both called the Feast of Dedication. Hanukkah means dedication. In John chapter 10, 22, he went up at the Feast of Dedication because they rededicated the temple and began to worship again. But they also rededicated the menorah. But it's also called the Festival of Lights because of the miracle of the light that happened on this particular day. So, wow, fighting and lighting And the great miracle, Judah the Maccabee was the one who led them in this great battle. I like to call him Judah the Mac. But (laughs) it's just an amazing story. And it just, it really has just been a story throughout my life that has given me inspiration and hope. But I want to share with you a modern Hanukkah story. It was during the Holocaust. And I actually lost most of my family during the Holocaust. There was a cantor. A cantor is someone who leads the worship in a traditional synagogue, and him and his family were escaping from Nazi Germany, and they had false papers. They got on a train, and they were right on the border of crossing from Germany into freedom, and all of a sudden, the train stops, and the Germans are going to be checking papers, and they're nervous because their papers are false, and if they get caught, they can lose their life. And all of a sudden, there's this big boom, And all of the lights go out. And the father reaches into his coat pocket and he pulls out his menorah. It's the last night of Hanukkah. He puts the candles in. He says the blessing. He lights the candles right in the window for everyone to be able to see. His families think he's lost it. His kids are like a wreck. They think this is the end of their life. There's a knock on the door. It's, it's the Nazis uh, coming, to their, coming to their cabin, and they think it's over, and they come in and they say, listen, we need your help. You are so wise to bring travel candles with you in case of an emergency. Can we use your candelabra to check people's papers? So they use their candelabra. They check everyone's papers. They don't even bother to check theirs, and they send them safely across the border to freedom. The dad turns to his his family and he says, listen, you witnessed a modern Hanukkah miracle here tonight. Don't ever forget what God does. He's still in the business of doing miracles and delivering his people. Wow. I love sharing that story. You know, the father risked his life. That story, that that could have ended very differently. 
And you know why he did it? He did it because he realized that you can live without food, you can live without water for a time, but you can't live without faith and hope. He wanted his children to understand that God was bigger than their situations and their circumstances. God can deliver. He delivered Israel in the times past. He delivered. He can deliver from the Nazis. He can deliver from any world power. He wanted his children to never lose faith and never lose hope. And that is the reality. The Maccabees never gave up hope. They fought against the odds, and a great miracle happened. Hope is what the lights of Hanukkah are meant to remind us of. Hope is the confident expectation in God and in his promises. The confident expectation in God and his promises that you can take him, that you can take the Lord at his word. You can't live with that hope. Rabbi Paul Paul says this, the Apostle Paul, these things remain, faith, hope, and love. For there to be genuine hope, there needs to be genuine faith. But faith has to also be built upon trust. So you can have faith without trust, but you can't have trust without faith. Faith is knowing God is true and that he's real, that his word is true. Trust is faith in action. It's stepping out. There were 12 disciples in the boat. Only one had enough trust, Peter, to not just believe he was the Messiah. He says, but I want to risk everything and come out of the boat to be able to walk to you. And this Hanukkah menorah reminds us that God can win against the odds, that we need to have faith We need to have trust in him. It doesn't matter how dark the night is. It doesn't matter what our situation and circumstance is. Do we have the the faith like the Maccabees to light even though there's not enough, but to believe God is going to show up and do something? And I love it. Now back to John chapter 10. He's up, Yeshua Jesus, up there at the Feast of Hanukkah. And some of the leaders said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? How long will you keep us in doubt? If you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. Of all the holidays that they could have asked this question of him, why is it asked of him at Hanukkah? What you have to understand, Hanukkah celebrates the miracle of the light. The Messiah is meant to be the light of the world. He's meant to bring the light of salvation, the light of deliverance. That's what the people were looking for. They were living in dark times under Roman oppressions. They're like, are you, the, are you bringing the light? Are you bringing the salvation? Are the, you are my light and my salvation. And the type of Messiah they wanted was a Messiah like Judah the Maccabee. They wanted a military Messiah that was going to establish an earthly kingdom that was going to overthrow their enemies and free them of their oppression. What they, they didn't understand, they, they didn't understand that the Messiah first had to come as the Lamb of God before he came as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. They didn't get it. They were looking at it from a physical, material perspective. They were looking at it from the kingdom of this world perspective. The first time Messiah came, that's not what he came to do. But Messiah wanted us to see the spiritual realities of the kingdom that has to come first. They only thought of it in in physical terms, not as much in spiritual terms. They wanted a hero like Judah the Maccabee who would deliver them from Rome like Judah delivered Israel back in the day from Antiochus Epiphanes, but Yeshua's program was different. But here's the amazing thing. They asked him, are you the Messiah? Messiah in Hebrew is Mashiach. Mashiach in Hebrew has the numerical value of 358. Why is that significant? Because the Hebrew expression or ha'olam, which means light of the world equals, guess what? 358, the miracle of Hanukkah, which celebrates light into the world, is the same numerical value of Messiah because Messiah 
is to be the light of the world and the light of the miracle of the, of the deliverance of Hanukkah is embodied in him. And he goes up to celebrate the miracle of Hanukkah. But of course there is more. Your redeemer in Hebrew equals 358 when you calculate it according to its full spelling. But of course there is more. The phrase Yavo Shiloh, until Shiloh comes. We talked about this messianic prophecy before, Genesis 49. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. Shiloh is the name of the Messiah. So what we have to understand, Yavo Shiloh equals 358. Are you the Messiah? Yavo Shiloh until Shiloh comes, 358. Your Redeemer, 358. Light of the world, 358. This is all the themes of Hanukkah, of what they're asking him. But of course, there is more. The Nachash in Hebrew, which means serpent, the serpent, the devil that tempted Eve in the garden. Guess what? Nachash, serpent, equals 358. Messiah, 358, will defeat the serpent, 358, because he is our Redeemer, 358, and the light of the world, 358, that is going to destroy the kingdom of darkness and of the devil, of the serpent. But of course, let's go deeper. At Hanukkah, one of the favorite things for kids to do, I still love it to this day, I play it with my boys, is to play dreidel. The dreidel is the four-sided top that you spin, and it's traditional to have chocolate coins known as gelt, and everyone puts some gelt in, and each one of the letters determines if you get one or get all or get half or get none, or you have to put some in. <laughs> if you want to learn to play dreidel, you can check out the instructions at Fusion Global or our new book, Aligning with the Times and Seasons. You can check it out on Amazon. But love to play dreidel for chocolate gelt. And on this dreidel, there are four letters. And each one of these letters represents four different kingdoms or four different exiles that try to impose their rule and reign over the Lord and over God's people. That's Babylon, Persia, Greek, and Rome. And we're still in the fourth exile, which is the Roman exile, even to this day. Guess what? The four letters of the dreidel add up to 358, which is the same numerical value of the name Messiah in Hebrew. So here's the awesome lesson of the dreidel. The dreidel represents the four kingdoms of the world. All these leaders, all these rulers, all these kingdoms, these world powers, they all thought that they were in control. But what they don't understand is that the dreidel is spun from the top down. It is God's hand that is the one spinning history. It is God, Yeshua, Jesus, who's the center. He's the axis on which all of this revolves. And one day, all the kingdoms of this world are going to fall, just like the dreidel falls. And the kingdoms of this world are going to be the kingdoms of our God. And the dreidel, which equals 358, represents the Messiah coming to rule and reign. And the phrase in Hebrew, the Lord reigns. The Lord has reigned. The Lord will reign forevermore. Guess what it adds up to? 358. Because the miracle of the menorah, the miracle of the dreidel, is that God has reigned, will does reign, has reigned, and will reign for all eternity. And that is good news for you and me. Therefore, we can have hope. Just like God's hand was spinning the dreidel, God's hand is on your life. Have faith in him. Trust in him, even in the darkest of night, even against the odd. Listen, if you don't trust in him, guess what? You're the one who's being taken for the spin. Don't be taken for the spin. Believe in him, and you're the one that can win. And I encourage you with one more thing. At Hanukkah, you're meant to put the menorah in your window so that everyone can see to publicize the miracle. It's a reminder that we're called to be a light for him in this time and season. We need to publicize not just the miracle of Hanukkah. More importantly, we need to publicize the miracle of Yeshua, who not only celebrated Hanukkah, but he was the fulfillment of Hanukkah. He was the light of the world, and you are his light because his spirit and life 
lives in you. So go be the light that people might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Well, I want to wish you all a happy Hanukkah. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of Mysteries of the Messiah. Friends, I just want to encourage you that just like God multiplied the oil and the lamps, God can multiply your resources. God can multiply your finances. And I hope he does because Israel was the land where the Hanukkah miracle happened. John chapter 10, Jesus goes up to the temple in Jerusalem. Friends, come with us up to Jerusalem. Imagine standing on the temple mount. Imagine being at the western wall around where this story took place on the southern steps. It is absolutely incredible. Just like the light of the candles, the, 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 the fire is flickers because it wants to ascend. It wants to go higher. It wants to go back to its source. Friends, when you go to Israel, you get lit, <laughs> just like this menorah. You will, be, you, will, you will become spiritually on fire in ways that you've never been before. So if you want to join me and just continue to journey deeper into the scriptures like we've been doing in this podcast, then check out Rock Road Rabbi Tours. I'd love for you to come with me. You can check out FusionGlobal.com for some more of my teachings, aligning with the times and seasons, you know, understanding the biblical holidays and their significance. We have a whole chapter on Hanukkah and how-tos and information on our website, how to play Dre to light the menorah. And of course, we love going to Israel with our friends from Premier Israel who have partnered with us on creating this podcast. We are so grateful to them. They've been a blessing to us. They've been a blessing to you because we couldn't do this without them. So go check out premierisrael.com. Lots of resources on Israel. A lot of questions you might have about traveling over there. And uh, I hope that you join us in the Holy Land and continue to listen. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on an episode. Tell your friends all about it. If it's been a blessing to you, we want to impact the lives and be a blessing of many people. Again, happy Hanukkah. I hope to see you in the land of Israel and shalom until next time.